All right, so we'll just give people a couple minutes to join and then we'll get started. All right, so we will go ahead and get started. Hello, everyone. Welcome. I'm Sarah D'Amico. I'm one of the clinical therapists at DBT of South Jersey. And I am Jelani McMath, and I am another clinical therapist here at DBT of South Jersey. Okay, so today we're going to talk about creating a life you actually want using the DBT skill, accumulating positives in the long term. First, we're going to go over some housekeeping items. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. All right. So everyone will receive a link to this webinar on Friday. It should be emailed to you by the end of the day. You're welcome to share that with anyone. And if you want any of your friends or supports or family members to watch any of our previous skill sessions, they are all on our YouTube channel, DBT of South Jersey. The next family support group, which will be led by our interns, is going to be January 26th at 7 p.m. Any adult over the age of 18 is welcome to attend. With that, we are going to be going over DBT overview and behaviors to increase and decrease, basically meaning what is DBT working on increasing and what is it working on decreasing? And that could be a great opportunity for anybody who's interested in DBT to learn more about DBT and the goals of DBT. Or if you're already doing DBT and you want your family members or friends to know what you're doing, that could be a great event for them to attend. The next DBT skill session is going to be announced in the future. We are not having one next month, I believe. So follow us on Instagram for any updates. And our next Mindful Yoga with Alex, which you can attend in person or virtually in person. It's at our Voorhees Yoga Studio, and that's going to be Monday, February 6th at 6 p.m. So you can sign up for in person by emailing Alex. Her email's right there, alexandradbtfselfjersey.com. Otherwise, you can sign up on our website. So all of our events are free and open to the community. And you're welcome to attend. You're welcome to tell your friends and family members. And then for today, please feel free to put any questions or comments in the chat and we can address them as they come up. All right. So actually I want to show you all, I'm, I, I'm going to actually put this in the chat. Let me stop sharing for one second. We created a folder for you for today that goes over different resources. So let me this in the chat. Okay, so there is a link to a folder that has some resources from today. So it has the handout that we'll be going over today. I will actually just show you everything really quickly. Okay, so let me exit out of this. Okay, so we have two folders in here. I just gave you the link for this. This, These are the handouts we're going over today. There's like a little infograph with all of the steps to building a life worth living. And then there's our DBT handout. So this goes over all the steps we're going to be going over today. 
and there is a values and priorities list. So you have access to that. You're welcome to share it with anyone. And then there's also a link to the presentation if you're interested in having a copy of that. And then there are a couple of additional resources if you would like to do more work with this. There's the worksheet from the book that goes through all of the steps to doing this. And then there's also a handout from Brene Brown that is all about values clarification. So please save that link if you're interested in doing that. And let's talk about what gets in the way of creating a life you want. Jelani, what do you think gets in the way of creating a life you want? I know for me, a lot of feelings of I know this is what I want to do, but I feel like I can't do it. Um, just a lot of like self-doubt of like, can I, you know, can I actually really accomplish what I'm setting out to do? Um, and I just feel like a lot of procrastination with doing it. That's what comes up for me. Mm, procrastination or just like maybe it's like some limiting beliefs. Mm -hmm. Okay. For me, it's definitely a lot of mood dependent behavior, which I know a lot of the clients I work with struggle with this. And I know people who've worked with me hear me talking about this all the time, but mood dependent behavior is like, if I feel like doing something, even if it's not effective for me, I'm going to do it. Like if it's impulsive and I feel like spending a bunch of money and that's like not in, in line with my goals, but I do it anyway. Or like, if I don't feel like doing something, nothing can get me to do it. So for me, I will sometimes feel very motivated and, and I'm going to be like, yeah, like I'm going to work on all these goals. And then as soon as that motivation goes away, it's really hard for me to approach and, and continue to work on the goals without the motivation. So any participants, you're welcome to share what gets in the way for you. But some other things that can get in the way are avoidance behaviors. Maybe you're feeling really anxious, even just about thinking about this. Maybe this topic makes you feel anxious and you just avoid thinking about it or avoid even like trying to work on steps to create a life that you want. Willfulness. So maybe you like know what you need to do. Maybe you know you need to make some changes in your life, but you just don't you just don't do it you choose not to because you don't want to or maybe you just feel the need to like be in control and if doing things to create the life you want requires giving up some control that might be really hard for you a lack of resources can be a big one hopelessness maybe you've tried to make some changes in your life and it's been really hard and you just feel like things are never going to get better or not knowing how well, fortunately, today we're going to really address the not knowing how. Some of these other ones might need to be addressed more in a therapy session to really talk about what's getting in the way and how can I move forward and move past these barriers. Okay, so the first step is to avoid avoiding. After that, we have to work on our values. So we have to identify our values that are important for us. But in order to do that, we need to figure out like, what are my values? And values are interesting because they're constantly changing and evolving over time. Like what is, what is important to me now is very different from what was important to me five years ago. And I'm sure in five more years or 10 more years, my values might change again. And so like, I constantly have to be checking in with myself about what are my values. And in the folders that we gave you, we gave you a values list and we'll go over examples of some values, but we, with our values, there might be a lot of things that are important to us in life, but we really have to ask ourselves, what are my highest priorities in life? Like what is most important? What do I really need to have in my life? And that might be dependent on the season of life that you're in. So you might want to ask yourself what values are really important to me. So we want to identify our values and take some time to work on that. And once we do that, then we want to choose one value to work on now. So what is really important to me in my life right here, right now? And what can I work on? I feel like one thing too, really quickly about values, what I like to mention is that you really want to work on uh, like differentiating between what's told should be important to you based off of like family or friends or just your environment versus what you feel is it actually important to you. So really try and hone in and focus on like quiet those other voices and really focus on like that voice inside. 
Absolutely. And that might require doing some journaling about what's important to you or talking to someone you really trust about what's most important to you. But I think that is something that's really important to highlight because we might be living our lives based on what other people say is important, what society says is important, or what my family says is important, or what my friend group says is important. But if that's not important to me, or if if those aren't my highest priorities, then I might end up feeling pretty miserable. And so it's really important to get clear on what are my values and how can I really focus on those and cultivate a life that's in line with those values. Uh, And there's a lot of study on the research or in the field of positive psychology on like steps we can actually take to make ourselves have more happiness in life. And that's ultimately what this skill accumulating positives in the long term is all about. But this research has demonstrated that when we live a life that's in line with our values, when our values are incorporated in our daily life, then we're going to have a lot more happiness in our lives. And so what are some examples of values? And again, you have a list that you have access to that goes into depth with more values, but one value might be to contribute. That might look like being generous and giving back to the community or spending time with others or helping people in need or making sacrifices for others or volunteering or serving. It could look like attending to relationships, which this is important for anyone in terms of building a life worth living, because in order for us to have happiness in our lives, we do have to have some, maybe not a lot, but some relationships that are really meaningful to us, people that we can talk to, people that we can do enjoyable activities with. And so that might require attending to your relationships or building relationships or cultivating new relationships. And so we might work on building new relationships, working on repairing current relationships or improving current relationships, repairing old relationships, reaching out to people who you may have lost touch with. And I think that's something that can happen is, is like maybe... I think for a lot of us, we get like caught up in this culture of busyness and it's really easy to focus on like achieving and things like that rather than relationships. And you might take a step back and notice like, well, actually my, I've really let my relationships slide, but my relationships are more important to me than achieving. And so that's just a small example of how our lives can get misaligned with our values and it can create some tension or stress, or maybe even feeling miserable if it gets to a certain point. So we also might wanna work on ending destructive relationships if those relationships are causing a lot of stress in our lives and treating others well. Another example of a value is being part of a group. So that could be, that could look like being social, having like a group that you get together with to do yoga, having a group of close friends, having people that you can go out to eat with or do certain activities that you enjoy with, hiking, feel a sense of belonging build character that could look like having integrity, being honest, acting in a way that makes you feel good about yourself and that makes you feel self-respect. That might be that might look like being loyal or standing up for your beliefs or keeping your word when you commit to doing something, being respectful, being courageous and facing and living life and keep growing as a human being. Another value is build character, be responsible, achieving things. Achieving things could look like getting uh, good grades if you're in college or working hard, being financially secure, learning, having fun, focusing on, on family. So that could look like seeing family often, keeping your family relationships strong, doing things for your family. Another value is being a leader. So that could look like being seen as others by successful, being in charge of something, being respected by others, being accepted, being healthy can be a value. So being physically fit, exercising, eating and sleeping while taking care of your body, practicing yoga, and then striving for moderation, which is, I think, is something to constantly work on, avoiding excesses and achieve balance in your life, which I know is something that I am frequently working on. When you look at this list of values, Shalani, which of these stand out to you the most? Hmm. I feel like for me right now in my life, um, I would say 
I would say I'm in a mode of achieving because like I talked about before, like sometimes I have these ideas, but procrastination may get in the way or my limiting beliefs get in the way. Um, And also being healthy, um, really just working on like all around um, mental, emotional and physical health. Um, And then lastly, I would say attending to my relationships, kind of like what you said, getting in the mode of just the busyness and the hustle and bustle and you know, not, I have a lot of like long distance friendships as well. And so, you know, making sure that I'm making phone calls and just making sure they know how important they are to me in my life. So those are probably my top three right now. Yeah, I relate to that. And I think where I struggle is a lot of these are really important to me. I definitely have been working on recently in the last couple of months, very much attending to relationships. Um, And it's hard to balance that with like achieving or learning or having fun or even like just striving for moderation and also trying to be healthy and doing all of those things. So when uh, when you all are looking at what are my values, I would encourage you to think about, you know, all of these might be important to you. And I would encourage you to think about yeah, maybe through my life, I will work on all of these. But in this specific season with where I am right now, if I really had to hone in on like one or two, which would be most beneficial and which would help me really feel more connected to my life and and help me have this sense of I am living a life that's in line with my values. Okay. All right. So now we want to move into the portion of identifying your goals. So the goals that you are identifying are very in line with the value that you would have previously chose in the past step that we just went over. Um, So setting goals in general, I feel like they're just very important because it helps you to learn a new behavior. Um, It helps guide you with just like increased focus on things. Um, And it helps you sustain like momentum um, and possibly just kind of uh, builds a sense of like confidence and confidence um, that you're able to kind of set a goal and achieve it. Um, so those are some of the reasons why we want to set goals. When we do set goals, we want to try again to pick goals that are motivating, goals that we can measure, um, goals that are both sometimes like long term and short term. But specifically, we're talking about long term goals today, um, and we want to be specific about what we want to work on. So in terms of when we're thinking about goals that are, are that are in relation with our values, we want to ask ourselves, like, how can I make this value a part of my daily life? And that's kind of where your goal is going to stem from. So, for example, goals could be related to um, traveling out of the country or um becoming more of a leader or mastering a difficult skill that you've been working on or making an impact in someone else's life, or maybe it's financial goals. So there's so many different avenues that you can move in identifying your goals. Um, So again, once you pick that one value, you narrow down that one value. Now this is just kind of like your brainstorming portion where you're like, okay, what are all the goals that I can think of that are in relation with this value? Um, So Sarah, I wanted to ask you, based off of some of the values that you identified in the previous slide, what do you feel like is a goal that you feel like you're working on now? Hmm. That is a good question. I mean, I think, I think I'm, I'm really working on connecting more with the relationships that I have. And I think my goal is just to have like really strong relationships with my family members. And I think that's become like increasingly important recently when I guess that wasn't always like, I mean, that's always been a goal for me, but it wasn't always my like top priority, but it has been. So I've been working on spending more time with family members and working on really making more time for my friends. Whereas in the past, like I would probably just cancel or I wouldn't cancel plans. I wouldn't make plans in the first place because I was so focused on doing other things. What about you? Yeah, I feel like, I mean, in thinking about um, the similar value that I had of like attending to my relationships, as I previously mentioned, like I, of course I have friends that are more local, but I do have a lot of friends that live all across the country and it involves a lot of talking on the phone and sometimes, or talking or texting. And sometimes 
I'm realizing that I'm taking a long time to respond or it's just taking me you know, a, a good amount of time to call someone back if I don't get to them. And I'm just recognizing that I really want to work on that. I do a lot of like, oh, I mentally responded, but then I, I I didn't actually respond. So I'm really trying to like, when I see the text and I'm thinking about it, I really want to work on responding back or um, setting like specific time limits on like how long I give myself to call someone back like of course I recognize that I'm busy sometimes but you know it feels good on the other end to receive a call back in a reasonable time um, and just kind of setting time aside in my life to talk to my friends I am really working on that more more often with my with my goals related to attending to relationships. I love your goals because I think they're so specific and I relate to that so much. I struggle with an- answering text messages. Sometimes it takes me like days to get back to people. And so I love the goal of like, I am going to respond to people, I don't know, within a day or something like that, because it feels good for me when people respond to me right away. Like I don't love it when I reach out to someone and they take a while to respond and that doesn't necessarily help the relationship by any means. Exactly. And I, I relate to that so much. And that's what I'm starting to realize. I'm like, okay, this is, and, and for me in identifying this goal, I feel like it is, it's something, and I feel like this is for all of you to think about too. Like when you're identifying what your goal is, yes, it is something that may be a little challenging because you're not necessarily implementing it right now, but it's something that's achievable for you. So in this, when you're identifying it, you, you don't want to set yourself up for failure by, saying like if I were to say I'm going to respond back within a minute right like I feel like that is setting myself up for failure because I just know I can't do that like I have different things going on in my life but if I were to say I will respond back within a day I feel like that's something that I can do Mm -hmm. Um, so just just being realistic with yourself and yet still challenging yourself as you're creating your goal yeah and even with that like that, that sets you up to maybe put some systems in place that are going to help you achieve that goal. Because I know if I set a goal for myself to do that, like I would need to like also set a reminder that went off like every day that was like, make sure you have responded to all of your messages or maybe like set a time and a space like every day at 10 PM, I'm going to sit down on my couch and respond to all my texts for that day for like 30 minutes. Okay, so here are some pictures of different examples of life worth living goals. And we really didn't talk about what a life worth living goal is. What is that, Jelani? So when I think of a life worth living goal, I think of a goal that I set that makes getting up every day and just living my day to day worth it because I'm working towards something in the long term that I know will bring me a sense of fulfillment. Um, So that's what I think of when it's a life worth living goal, something in your life long term that you really, really want for yourself um, that you're trying to work towards now. Definitely. Yeah. Like a life worth living goal is a huge goal of DBT. And to say a life worth living does not mean that your life isn't worth living as it is now. And it sometimes might not feel that way. Like, especially if you are currently living a life where you don't get a lot of pleasure out of the things you're doing on a day-to-day basis, and maybe you're feeling kind of miserable or depressed at times. And so it's all about making changes so that your life feels good in the long term and so that you have happiness in the long term and so that even like on the bad days because we're not all going to have good days all the time you have this thing to hang on to because you know it's going to get better and you know that you enjoy your life for the most part on a day-to-day basis so we have some pictures here of different things that represent that so I'm curious um for, for any participants, if there are any goals that you see on the screen that are things that you would want for yourself or maybe something completely different. All right. So yeah, feel free to put any of those goals in the chat. would love to hear from you all what you feel like your, mm-hmm. what your term goals are. Um, and I'll, I'll look out to see if anyone puts anything in there. Um, but in the same 
token with goals, right? So I just kind of talked about how you first want to identify the value and then you kind of want to brainstorm go any goals that you can really think of that are in relation to the value. However, it's a lot when we have like five different goals listed. It's like, oh my gosh, like where do I start? It feels just very overwhelming. So you really want to start by breaking it down of like, okay, what are two very important goals on this list that I just created that I can work on right now. So it really is about constantly refining your list because you don't want to overwhelm yourself. Your goal is to refine it to one goal that you'll work on right now. And again, this is going to make it more manageable for you. And it's going to allow you to focus in on like one thing at a time. And I feel like that's the concept with um, breaking Breaking your values into action steps that you can take now and developing a life worth living is about refining it and figuring out, okay, what can I do right now? I see something in here. It says that the chat, is the chat disabled? Oh, is it disabled? Okay. So you might have to ask in Q&A. Sorry about that, everyone. Yeah. So uh, definitely throw things in the Q&A. Didn't realize the chat was disabled. Um, but okay. So again, um, this is all about refining, checking the facts. I feel like is a big thing here. And when you're checking the facts, it's really about, um, identifying things in your life that, you know, um, right now that would make it, whether it's achievable or things that would limit you from achieving your goal. Um, so this is just when you're assessing for information in your life to guide you towards, is this goal really something that I can do right now? Um, like, for instance, if going back to my goal of like responding back to my friends within a day over a text, like if, if I was in financial struggle and I didn't have a phone right now, right? Like I need to check the facts to make sure I even have the means to be able to achieve that goal. If I don't have a phone, I can't do that. Um, so again, you want to just do a lot of assessment and reflection on where you are in your life right now and the things that you have, the things you have to offer and seeing if that goal is in line with the place that you're in. Now, Sarah, I wanted to ask you, like, how do you feel like you work on kind of going from a general list of things to refining things to one thing? Because I feel like that can be hard for a lot of people. Like, oh, I want to work on this. I want to do this. I want to do that. But like, what do, what do I work on now? Yeah, for me, I have to write it down. I think like taking some time writing it down, I find journaling to be really helpful or I'm visual. So I'm, I'm going to show us all a visual way of working on this. So that can be helpful to like actually writing it in like, di di like different options and sticky notes. What I love about this is that ultimately what we're doing here is we are taking this like big overwhelming concept of creating a life I want, building a life worth living and like breaking it down into like such a small chunk that I could even do it now. And I think a good test for myself as to is this goal small enough? Is this goal bite size enough? Is like, could I do it today? Or at the very least, could I do it this week? If not, I probably need to break it down even smaller. What about you, Jelani? Do you have any like tips or techniques for this? I was I was just going to say I relate a lot to writing this down because I feel like if it's for me personally, if it's just in my head, I feel like it's very jumbled and I'm having a difficult time narrowing it down because I even forget all the whole long list of goals. So for me, kind of sitting down, allowing like kind of setting aside some time to do this. I feel like that's just a very important aspect of it and just writing it down, creating for me, it's about like creating like a, the ambiance to do it. I'm like a candle person. So I'm like lighting candles, have my journal, um, and then just kind of write everything down and start kind of checking off or crossing off things um, as I'm working through it. I also, I see some questions and some comments in the Q&A, which is exciting. What do we have in here? Yes, so exciting. Um, also, everyone, I changed the chat setting so you can 
you can send chats to Jelani and I. So whatever is easier, the Q and A works great. Um, so I do see that someone said a goal that you're focusing on the moment is finding a romantic partner, getting on dating apps and physical vitality. So yoga twice a week, food shopping and cooking once a week. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love how you also identified, you already kind of like went a step ahead and kind of identified how you're going to work on the goal. So if you're mm -hmm. choosing to um, start dating, you're like, okay, well, I kind of need to make a dating app account. Or, you know, if you're working on your physical health, you're going to yoga twice a week, very specific, um, food shopping and cooking once a week, which I feel like is very specific too. That's, that's awesome. And I'm wishing you all the best with those goals. Yes. I love those goals. Um, all right. And then I see a question here, but what if I have a new goal, but I have no time to work on it because I'm working on maintaining the other goals that I have already achieved? Yeah, that, I, Roberta, I, I definitely understand what you're saying, right? Because I feel like with goals, it's not always one goal at a time where I'm starting it, I'm finishing it, and then I'm starting one again. Sometimes things like roll over a little bit. Um, so I can definitely see the difficulty with that. What I would say, um, if you're feeling like you don't have time to work on it, I feel like the first step would be to work on problem solving, how you can create some time to work on that goal. I also think prioritization is really important. So if the goals that you're already working on right now are still very, very prevalent and important in your life, then maybe it's about continuing to work on those goals and tabling the new one. However, if you feel like the new one that you have is extremely important too, and your other ones are important, then I would work on figuring out how you can allot a certain amount of time to that new goal. Sarah, do you have any thoughts on that one? Yeah, I think if you, if you don't have, I mean, I think whatever is getting in the way of a goal, right? Like if you don't have time to work on a new goal, if you don't have money to work on it, on the specific goal that you want to work on. If there's some other barrier to working on this goal, like I'm thinking of that the goal in terms of like the romantic partner, like if you need child care and, and help with that, then that could get in the way of like going on dates and things like that. So I think if there's something getting in the way of working on your goal, then like you said, the, the goal is going to, the new goal is going to be problem solving that first. But so that I can then work on my goal. So problem solving, I need more time. Like how can I create more time in order to be able to work on my goals and the things that are important to me? And also I think a good question to ask is like, and, you, and I think if this were my issue, if I were struggling with time, I would want to just like probably make a Google like spreadsheet or something and like write down all the hours in my day and like no, identify like where I'm like spending my time and I would really go through each item maybe I do this for a week and at the end of the week I would go through each item and I would say I mean maybe maybe there are some things that I have to do that I can't like they're non-negotiables but maybe there are things that I'm spending time on that really aren't serving me that really aren't in line with my values and maybe those are things I can work on decreasing the amount of time that I'm spending on them or or even just let go altogether so that I do have time to work on the things that are truly important to me and serving me in my life. Yeah. I love Anybody has any follow-up questions? Let us know. And I think, um, let's see, Rochelle, you shared um, that you're working on achieving something in the art field which would be long-term, diverse and enjoyable and making you feel important enough to get to get you up in the morning. Mm. That's awesome. So achieving something in the art field um, that's both enjoyable and diversifying, that's going to kind of make you feel like you're, you have a reason to get up. Um, yes, and I can see how that is like such a long-term goal because I feel like it's about, all right, what are some different things that you could do in the art field that would bring about um, those, those feelings or like that motivation to get up, which I feel like we're going to talk about in a little bit too, about identifying action steps that you can now work on based off of your general goal. 
Yeah. And I feel like there are, are even like so many smaller goals that you could set related to that one larger goal. And so maybe even like coming up with like a bunch of different smaller goals that would like give you that sense of achievement. Okay. I think we answered everyone's questions for now. Let us know if you have any more. Okay. I'm going to go back to sharing. All right. So we've got the next step, which is identifying your small action steps. So identifying your small action steps are about breaking down the one goal that you chose that's in line with your value to get you closer to your goal. So again, when you're taking small action steps daily or whether it's weekly or monthly, depending on what you set, it's really about the idea that you are moving closer to your goal. So if the journey is 5,000 steps, but daily or weekly you're taking 500, right? Although you're not all at, you know, you're not at your destination, you're getting closer each time to your destination. And that's what the small action steps are about. I, I also want to say too, that I think there's a lot of judgments that come up with identifying small action steps um, in regards to like, this should be easy for me. Why do I have to like break it down like this? Or maybe some comparison thoughts come up of like, this other person doesn't have to break it down this small or like they're able to do this and I'm not. So you really want to try and adopt a very non-judgmental stance of yourself and show yourself compassion and warmth and understanding for where you need to start to get to where you're going. Um, I think when you're first starting to identify the small action steps, you want to kind of go about it in a similar way as what I previously said with your goals. You want to just kind of brainstorm as many ideas that you can think of in regards to action steps. Um, so small action steps would be like if I were looking to get a job, maybe it looks like I need to just go on the internet and see what jobs are available in the field that I want. Or maybe I need to work on my resume. Like if I don't even have my resume to send out, then I'm not going to be able to apply to the job. Um, or maybe it's looking um, at certain salaries. Uh, so again, it's just identifying these small things that you feel like you can do right now. Not something that necessarily makes you feel like, oh, I've got to wait so long to do this because I can't, I can't do this right now. Yeah. And I think, I think psychologically what this does for us is it really helps us with those limiting beliefs that we talked about earlier, because if I'm telling myself, I can't do this, or like, it's too hard or it's too much or it's too big or whatever it may be. Well, look, I, I broke this down. I broke this big goal and down, down into little steps and I can actually work on them now. And so I actually do have the ability to make some changes, even if it is small steps at a time. So with taking small action steps at a time, like even Sarah, what we were talking about with, um, with attending to relationships, because it sounds like we're both working on that. Um, what do you feel like are maybe a list of like some action steps that you have brainstormed that you maybe haven't started yet? Well, I mean, I actually have, and, and you know, I think, I think the cool thing about small action steps is, is it also allows you to be intentional because, and I think for anyone, when we're not being intentional with our goals, we can like start out with one thing in goal and one reason for wanting that goal and then end up somewhere else completely. And so I think if we're like constantly revisiting these small action steps that can keep us really intentional. And so some things I have thought about and worked on are like reaching out to people more often because I tend to lately I've noticed that I tend to like only do things if people reach out to me first so I've been trying to like reach out to people more often and asking them to do things or like having people over um so I but I think I could even get like more specific with that like making like even making a list of like all of the people that I really want to make sure that I'm attending to my relationships with and like thinking about like, okay, like how specifically can I work on my relationship with this person? And maybe I could even do that once one at a time because that sounds like a lot maybe to do all at once. 
but that's a good a good question. What about you, Jelani? I think for me, I guess well, the the one that's sticking out in my head would be um like in terms of calling people back because I feel like I spend a lot of time, like a a good amount of time on the phone, like talking to friends. Um first I feel like an action step to take would be if someone does call me and I like miss it or I'm working or whatever it is that I'm committing to like responding back with like a time or a day that I'm going to call back almost like scheduling it because I feel like that holds me really accountable um I also think too that I'm personally working on allotting times within my schedule during the week because I I mean of course there are spontaneous things that I do but for the for a majority of it, I have it planned out in time increments. So I try and set specific times throughout the week where I'm going to kind of make some phone calls and catch up with certain people. So that's something that I feel like I'm I'm planning on implementing um, to attend to my relationships, my long-term, long, long, long-distance relationships. <laughs> All right. So some ideas for increasing motivation to build a life worth living. Sometimes we might not have the motivation or maybe like we talk about it now and you feel motivated, but like later that motivation goes away and then it kind of like goes to the back burner working on these goals. So some ideas are journal. That's there's definitely a typo there. Sorry about that, everyone. So journal, make a vision board, So make a vision board, like similarly to the pictures that we were looking at earlier, like what are images of things that you would want more in your life and like getting a poster board and like putting those all on the poster board and hanging it somewhere where you'll be able to see it every day. Doing like art or looking at art can be really motivating. Planning rewards or incentives for yourself if you like a complete an action step or complete a goal. Imagine yourself being successful. So like if, if you were doing the goal already, what would that look like? And imagine yourself doing it. And we can actually learn how to do things that way by imagine our, imagining ourselves doing them. Listening to podcasts and music that are motivating, TED Talks, books, building mastery. So, And I think even just like working on those small steps and achieving small steps is a way of building mastery. Because once you do that thing, you're going to get a sense of accomplishment. And that's going to give you some more momentum and motivation to keep going. Challenge the thoughts that are keeping you stuck rather than just believing everything you think. Question yourself when you tell yourself, I can't do this. Is that really true? Can I really not do this? Talk to a friend or therapist. Give yourself time to think, dream, travel, take a day trip, go for a walk, spend time in nature. Jelani, are any of these things that help motivate you or maybe like something that's not on this list? It's actually, I love, so the vision board. That's actually something that I've done in the past. And I got away from that for years and I'm in the mood right now where, I, cause I used to love scrapbooking. Like I love, I just love the visual appeal of it. And I'm actually thinking about um, creating a vision board just for the, I haven't done it to kind of like start the new year off, but I also want to say to everybody too, that like Yes, we have entered into the new year. And if you're thinking about what your goals are for the year, it's never too late to start this process. So although I haven't made my vision board yet, it's actually something that's very much so on my radar. I think it's helpful for me to actually look at something and like hang it up and be able to look at it. Um, I feel like it's also a great reminder of like when I'm not focused on what my goals are, I can visually see Mm -hmm. like this is where I want to be. Um. Also going for a walk for me that it it really helps like clear my mind. I'm very, I'm trying to be more intentional about like putting my phone away while I'm walking um, and just really allow me to sit with my thoughts um, and just kind of observe what's around me. Um, So those two things are what I'm really working on now. What about you, Sarah? Mm, I mean, I, I like the idea of making a vision board. I think I am going to do that. I find journaling to be really helpful. I find podcasts to be really helpful, especially like going for a long walk and listening to a podcast, because I find that when I'm listening to podcasts, it really allows me to get my thoughts flowing. And I feel like very inspired and motivated. Um, And I think I just want to give myself more time. I like what you said about 
going for a walk without your phone, because I think that gives you time to think. And I think having time to think is really helpful for just like checking in with myself and giving myself time to dream. I think just like giving myself like creating space in my schedule for me to do that. Maybe even like scheduling it out. Like this is the time I'm just really going to allow myself to dream and like think about what I want my life to look like going forward. Okay. So I'm curious for our participants, what are things that motivate you? Or are there any items on this list that you want to try? Are there other things that you've tried that are really helpful? So please share that with us. I'm going to stop sharing for a second. And I'm going to share my screen once more. And We're going to go through a couple examples of what this looks like. All right. So if any participants would like us to go through any specific examples, please let us know. I have an example on here. So the yellow sticky notes are numbered and those are our different steps for building a life worth living. So the first step is to avoid avoiding. So if I was going to go through this process and this is an example, I'm going to avoid avoiding and then identify values. So three values on here are live a life of pleasure, be financially secure and be part of a group. So if these are my values that I identified as like most important for the season of my life right now, Then I'm going to pick one to work on right now. So maybe the first, maybe that looks like being financially secure and being financially secure. I think in this, in this example, if I'm financially secure, then that's also going to help me live a life of pleasure. So it will have a, I think a domino effect and it will also help me maybe find ways to be part of a group. Like if I'm interested in, I don't know, yoga or CrossFit, then that financial security helps open those doors for me. So in order to be financially secure, that's the one value I'm working on now, I identified six goals related to that. So I could start a new job, I could negotiate a raise or more hours, I could pay down debt, I could go to school so I can get a better job, I could save money or start investing. And so I decided that I was going to save money and save a $1,000 emergency fund. So that's my goal to save a $1,000 emergency fund. And so in order to do that, in order to save this $1,000, I have to make a budget. I could put $100 from every paycheck into my emergency fund and then set an automatic transfer. Some other steps might be like after making the budget, like finding out areas where I can cut a couple of things. So that will give me a hundred dollars to put from every paycheck. And then I'm setting my automatic transfer. So that's the step I'm taking now. So I've gone from this big value of like being financially secure to setting an automatic transfer. And that's one step closer to my financial security. I love this example. I feel like it's so relatable in regards to having a big general goal of being financially secure and figuring out ways that you can implement that now. Um, So I feel like even in this example, it's, it's definitely a relatable one. And it's so it's, I feel like it's really motivating to see how you can get so specific um, with setting an automatic transfer, for instance, to be more financially secure. So hopefully this example for you all like helped you to see how you can run through these seven steps. Um, And remembering too that step seven with taking one action step now, it's something that you can literally do right now. Like there's nothing, like for setting an automatic transfer, like there's nothing that's stopping me from doing that right now. So you wanna make sure you're attending to that as well. Yeah. So to go through another example, one of my personal life worth living goals is to buy 
an apartment or, or like a little house in Italy that I can go to when I retire. But like, I would like to go there. Like, I would like this to happen like sooner rather than later so that I can go there throughout my life. But anyway, I think when we have a big goal like that, like to buy, buy this like retirement house in Italy, it's like really easy to be like, okay, well, that's like not going to happen. And then, or like, that's like not going to happen for like quite some time. So why even think about it now? But I can start working on that now and I have. And so I would probably say that's also related to my value of like living a life of pleasure. And I just like how in in Italy, I feel like they know how to do that very well. Um, So some things that I've had to do in order to do that are like pay down debt and work on saving and work on investing and things like that. So let's say that I wanted to, I hadn't started this process yet and I'm going back to several years ago. I had to start by paying down debt. And the, and my goal in paying down debt was to be able to have financial security to buy this retirement home someday. And so to pay down debt, if that was, if that was my goal instead of the other two, my small action steps still still might be to make a budget. Um, and it might be to figure out like what is the most money that I can get away with putting toward debt every month in order to get rid of my debt so that I can then start saving even more money and putting even more money to investments. And then I'm making, taking one step now. So like, I could just say that maybe that would look like making a budget. And then I went from this big life worth living goal of like having this house in Italy to making a budget. And that's something I could do now or this week. I love that, Sarah. Um, that's that's your life with living goal. Sarah and I both love to travel, so I love hearing that for you and that you're actively working on that. All right, I'm gonna stop sharing. So, any final questions from our participants? Any questions, comments, concerns, clarification you need? Anyone want to go through like a really quick example of your own? Thank you, Alyssa. You're welcome. You're so welcome. Thank you for attending. All right. Thank you so much for attending, everyone. Uh, We wish you all the best in your... I, um, in your journey to creating this life worth living and creating the life that you want and accumulating positives in the long term, please reach out to us via email. If you have any further questions, you can reach me at Sarah, S-A-R-A-H at DBT of South Jersey.com. And you're welcome to email me any questions you have. Otherwise, take care. And yes, this recording will be shared. You'll receive a link on Friday and it will also be uploaded to our YouTube channel. So you can share that with anybody that you know and I also just want to say thank you all for coming as well you can reach me at jelani at dbt of south jersey.com as well and I'm wishing you all the best in your endeavors of building a life worth living and just remembering to tell yourself like you can do this like you got it be your own biggest cheerleader um so wishing you all the best and thank you for coming out bye everyone bye